Hey guys, this is John with Redenso, and welcome to another Friday video. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we got a chance to do one, but with the COVID-19 lockdown, we've been kind of hamstrung and kind of limited by what we could do. Um, development has kept going on Thea, a little bit slower than I would have liked, but it's just the nature of the world nowadays, and I really can't complain. I uh, could have a lot bigger problems, such as family or friends being sick. Thankfully, everybody's been healthy so far. But instead of just delaying another video until we have something uh, to update you about Thea, I figured we would do something kind of quick and, and kind of interesting, and that's take a look at how radar passes through different materials. I'm actually going to do two tests today. The first is something that some people in RD Forum have asked, specifically with the Falcon HR, which is a low-power K-band gun, a really, really deadly gun. Um, people have asked what the signal looks like with different uh, polarities. In other words, if you're holding it straight up and down like this versus on the side. So we're going to take a look at that and the difference in signal strength that you see in those conditions. And then we're going to look at what radar looks like after it passes through carbon fiber, um, which is a big thing that people ask. What it looks like when it passes through really, really thick plastic with foam inside. This is kind of like a Harbor Freight Pelican case. And then a thinner piece of plastic, which would be my, my mouse pad. Um, and then a fender from a car. This is not just a metal fender, but it is also painted with metal flake. So kind of interesting. Um, these are real world situations that happen when you're installing radar detectors in cars. Um, I don't know, might be cool. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the signal strength of the Falcon HR when it's held as a police officer would, which is uh, straight up and down or upside down. I have it upside down here just for ease of resting it on the bench, but the polarity is the same either way. So if you look at the screen, you'll see that we're sitting about minus 55, maybe minus, minus 60 dB. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on its side and see what kind of impact that has on the signal strength. So you can see right there that turning it on its side lowers it to about minus 70 dB. So you're looking at over a 10 dB drop in signal strength just by turning it on its side. It's pretty crazy stuff. And then immediately, if you hold it upside right, <coughs> you're back up to minus 50. Turn it on its side and you lose 10 dB or more. And you can see that you're gaining SNR as well every time I turn it in the vertical position. Neat stuff. So the first material that we're going to put in front of this Falcon HR is carbon fiber. Uh, this is a part off of Jason's car, our national sales manager. He has a really, really high-end uh, carbon fiber wing made by APR Performance on the back. So he took off this end plate, which is a, a really nice piece of pure carbon. There's no metal in between this. This is literally pure carbon. So once again, we're looking at about minus 60 dB. And I'm going to put this here in front of the horn. And that's pretty crazy. We're dropping to almost minus 80 dB, maybe minus 75. And I mean, it's, it's night and day. You can see me waving it and just watch the signal strength drop. So that's interesting because I know some people think, hey, carbon fiber is not metal. We can throw a radar detector behind it. Based on these results, I would have to recommend against it. And this is a pretty thin piece of carbon, too. It's not like this is two inches thick. But you're seeing a drastic, drastic signal strength decrease, almost as much as metal. So rule number one, don't put your radar detector behind carbon fiber. Let's take a look at plastic. So let's start with a thin piece of plastic. This is my Corsair mouse pad. It's maybe an eighth of an inch thick at best case scenario. And once again, minus 60 dB, and we put it in front, zero change. It's actually crazy. You don't even see a one decibel change putting a thin piece of plastic in front of the radar horn. So any kind of thin plastic, totally good to go. What about thicker plastic? This is not just plastic, but it also has foam in between. So um, this would almost be like an a interior panel with sound deadening foam on it. Um, if I had to guess, I would think you'd need a little bit of attenuation, but let's see. You do, but it's really not bad. I mean, you're, you're maybe looking at 
maybe a decibel of loss, but it's virtually not noticeable. So even pretty thick plastic. I mean, you've probably got total, I would say about an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of material between both sides of this, and you don't notice a difference. So here we have a real car fender. Uh, this is a fender off of Jason's Laguna Seca Blue F80 BMW M3. Uh, this car had about 650 wheel horsepower. Uh, it got into an accident on the track that was not related to Jason at all. Um, and this is one of the leftovers from it. The car is repaired, it is fixed, don't worry. But this is gonna become wall art in our office now. Oh yeah, you're getting a drastic, drastic decrease in signal strength. I mean, it's, it's like they're carbon fiber. You're, you're losing 20 to 25 decibels of signal strength. This shouldn't surprise anybody. We've known metal's bad for a while, but I wanted you to see just how bad. Do not put a radar detector antenna behind a metal fender. You're not gonna pick up any signal. Just for fun, let's throw in a water glass. I have it sitting here at the end of the video. Why not, right? And I know this has implications for dash mount detectors especially. So still sitting at about minus 60 and with a water glass in front, Actually, we see some attenuation there. I would say you're losing about, probably about two and a half, three decibels. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, you're definitely getting some attenuation from glass, more so than you did even from the thick plastic. Once again, this isn't super surprising. We've seen um, better performance from remote mount detectors mounted with a clear view of the road versus the dash mount detectors, which are mounted inside the car. Um, but it's interesting to see just how much of a difference it kind of makes. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I hope everybody's doing well and safe during the lockdown. Um, we're gonna try to brainstorm and figure out how to bring you more theater related content in the future. It's just tough when our lab is broken down. I'm the only employee in the office right now. Everybody else is working from home. Um, but we do think we have some cool stuff coming up. We have been making progress. Uh, we've ordered another version of the digitizer. We, we're on pretty much final revisions for most of the hardware. So I don't think we're too far away from some of the cool stuff you guys wanna see. Um, to make sure you guys stay up to date on it, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and enable notifications. YouTube won't show you everything otherwise. That'll make sure that you get notified as soon as we drop new content related to Thea. Um, but other than that, thanks for being with us. I hope everyone's doing well. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Take care, guys.